Okay, and we are welcome back. Uh, next hour is one of my favorite topics. Yeah. It's about open source uh, as a developer topic. Everybody is excited about open source and we have a great program to go a little bit behind the scenes at SAP around open source, what we're doing, and also like where you can learn and also apply what does it mean open source for your company, um, the details, and often like also like learnings on how we apply it. And hopefully you can take this back into your company and into your learnings as well. So that's really exciting for the next hour. And yeah, like, Plenty of content to come here. Yeah, I mean, you know, first up, we're going to have a expert talk um, on open source with uh, two of our SAP experts, uh, Martin Fassungen and Peter Giese. So um, Thomas is going to be talking to them all about what SAP is doing uh, around open source. They're also going to talk about the famous Corona Warrant app, um, I'm sure, and some other um, open source projects here at SAP. But then, because this year's tech ed and, you know, it's never just about SAP experts, we're also going to have another community talk um, with Daniel Gravinson and Marina Pontiakova. Marina, I really hope I said your last name correctly. Um, and it's going to be on simplified integration in an ADE with Gradle plugins. So I have no idea what Gradle plugins are. I'm super excited to find out. Um, and yeah, I guess those are the main two topics that we have right now. Yeah, so there's plenty to, to come in open source and we know the community and the developers out there are very engaged in open source. And I saw it yesterday also from the winners of the DevToberfest. <laughs> so I think there is another challenge here back to SAP to make one of the projects open source. So we always definitely listen to this. Um, it's also the experience about it. Uh, for us where we where we need the feedback from the community but we also appreciate the contribution to a lot of these projects um, without the developers out there we wouldn't be that successful in all of these open source projects and I think what I always like most as like leading the developer relations program is the direct feedback and this also ties nicely into community engagement um, and I often hear it back from the from the product teams internally. It's like, well, I get a ticket in and that takes me forever to figure yeah. it out. If I can get the same response via an issue, mm -hmm. GitHub coming in, yeah. or even better, pull request, I know exactly what to do. Yeah. Uh, so this is something we are definitely encouraging a lot on the internal SAP side to involve this. Um, but we also need the support for the community. And I think already the community there for pulling this all together. Um, and your favorite product SAP is there's plenty <laughs> of open source happening yeah. there as well. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, the Cloud Foundry environment, we're definitely, we definitely support and we're one of, I think, the major supporters of the whole Cloud Foundry open source project. Of course, we started this whole Kima, um, so the Kima runtime based on Kubernetes. But, you know, just recently, and I think we heard this uh, in the executive keynote from day two um, about business application studio, how that is also based on, on open source, right? So it takes the same basis as Visual Studio Code to also make it easier. Yeah, um, that for, helps you also like then to take certain things and, and have the same plugins yeah, run the plugins, in Visual Studio yeah. Code. So this is like, it gives also more choices to the developers out there and definitely um, choice that's that's what everybody wants, but also like a little bit guidance. I think it's always choice and guidance. That's, yeah. that's what, what people want. That's what we hear all the time. I mean, you know, they want us to kind of give them the golden path. I love that phrase from Daniel Hutzel, so the CAP um, product CPO. He's always talking about the golden path, and I, I just love that phrase. Um, and yeah, so I guess... Now we already, oh, they're already Yeah, they're screen. here. So <laughs> welcome, Peter. Peter, uh, Peter is director of the SAP Open Source Program Office and Martin Fassung, senior developer manager. So great to have you here, Peter and Martin. Yeah, good morning and thank you for having us. So we talked already good a little. Good morning, Cecilia. Oh. Hey, good morning. <laughs> so we talked already a little bit about open source, and you two probably had the biggest exposure on open source in 2020. So it's great to have you here on the show. And uh, open source is a very important topic. Um, we have a very interesting talk, like and questions for you, Martin. Later on, you were in the middle of the open source movements in the last half year here in Germany. So, but let me start out, Peter, a little bit. 
SAP is very much engaged in, in open source, um, but often we get the question, what is SAP doing in open source? So it's not really that known in the public. Uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of background and reasons and what we're doing around open source, Peter. Yeah, sure. Maybe to put SAP's open source engagement a little bit into context or into perspective, it helps to look at the open source contributor index, which is published by EPAM Technologies. They are looking into um, commercial organization and their contributions on GitHub to open source. And they have a ranking and they are listing um, SAP as the ninth largest commercial contributor to open source on GitHub in 2020. And yeah, that means in numbers that more than 1,600 developers from SAP have contributed at least a single commit, a lot of them, of course, even more uh, on public GitHub this year. So then, of course, it's a valid question. Why is that not so well known? Um, I think there are two main reasons for that. The first reason it is that SAP, of course, is mainly known for the business applications that we are in cloud stack terms providing as software as a service. And there we are normally not publishing or developing um, our applications as open source. That's similar to, let's say, Microsoft not uh, developing Office 365 as open source. But on the lower layers of the cloud stack, the path and infrastructure as a service layer, there we are doing a lot um, with open source. And uh, we will touch on this later in this talk, I guess. And um, also when it comes to developer tools and tools for application development, we are doing a lot in the open source space. In your um, moderation, you already mentioned some examples with the uh, Business Application Studio. And the second reason I think that um, our engagement at open source is not yet so well known by our um, customers, partners, or the general public might be that we have not been very transparent and very outspoken about our engagement in the past. And that's why we now um, try to be much more communicative and transparent about it. In October, <clears throat> for instance, we have launched our new SAP open source Twitter channel. So please follow us if you are interested in everything open source at SAP. And um, we also launched a new podcast series called The Open Source Way, where every two weeks we are publishing a new episode explaining um, what we are doing on the open source management side from our OSPO, but also on our project side. For instance, just yesterday, we have published a new episode with developers from the Gardener project who told about um, how Gardener helps to manage Kubernetes clusters at large scale. Now, so it's definitely, and that's why we also have you here at uh, Channel One to spread the news about open source. And as you say, like that, definitely follow the the Twitter handle um, Open SAP. Uh, that's that's the um, the open source um, Twitter handle to to check out all the news and stay in touch. Uh, you touched on it a little bit, Peter, already about the developer tools, the cloud native tech stack. Um, we had a little bit in the intro, like, what other open source uh, examples is like SAP currently engaging on? Yeah, maybe let me start a little bit with history. So um, tooling, open source tooling for application development has always been high on our agenda. That was one of the driving factors why SAP joined the Eclipse Foundation in 2004 as a founding member and we are strategic member until today. And that was also the reason why the first open source project that we ever turned into an Eclipse project was the memory analyzer. Um, it was first called SAP memory analyzer. Now it's called uh, Eclipse memory analyzer that was used to analyze heat dumps from Java stacks. And that was in 2007. And to give you a recent example, just this year, we have turned um, the SAP rulers tool, which is a vulnerability assessment and analysis tool that allows Java developers to do a static and dynamic code analysis um, to find out if there are any known vulnerabilities in their code and also to see with a dynamic analysis if the vulnerability is hitting their code or not. And this tool we have um, donated to Eclipse or we are running now as an Eclipse project. Now it's called Eclipse Daddy since this year. Or if you turn to the cloud stack, you already mentioned two of our most significant cloud native projects. One is the Gardener project, which allows you to manage um, Kubernetes clusters to set them up, day one operations, and also then to manage them, day two operations. 
Internally at SAP, we are managing thousands of um, Kubernetes clusters also as part of our commercial SAP cloud platform offering. And we also have the Kima project, which is a side-by-side -side extension platform based on Kubernetes and Knative. And it allows you to use cloud events and um, um, function as a service to develop extensions for SAP solutions, but also for third-party solutions. So it's open and you can also develop extension and integrations for all kinds of solutions, be it from SAP, non-SAP. And um, this is also offered by SAP as a managed commercial service as part of SAP Cloud Platform. There it's called SAP Cloud Platform Extension Factory. Perfect. Yeah, and I think there's plenty of more examples. Um, I think there's also a way Absolutely. to go to developers.sap.com, open source or open, uh, that's where you find all these projects. Um, and as, as you said, like in the beginning, there's so many things evolving and that's why you should stay everybody on top also with the, the SAP open source Twitter um, account and, and follow what's coming from SAP. Peter, um, you're the head of OSPO. And uh, I, I know like often when we uh, mention it, OSPO, what is OSPO? <laughs> open Source Program Office. I think everybody in the open source space who is really deeply involved knows what it is. But um, maybe you can give us a little bit like the background history and, and how you're running OSPO at SAP. Yeah. OSPO is an acronym for Open Source Program Office. It's so to say is a one-stop shop for all things open source at SAP. We are responsible for defining and um, executing the SAP open source policy, the SAP open source strategy. We are responsible for managing open source related risks and ensuring open source compliance. But what is most important for us as OSPO, we see ourselves as a service team for our developers. So instead of policing our developers, like it was often the case in the past, we rather want to um, support our developers and empower them so that they can benefit from open source, be it in the form from, of open source consumption or be it in the form of open source contribution. And in order to do so, we are continuously improving the SAP open source management processes and tools. So we try to automate things like license scanning, security scanning, to integrate this into the CI CD pipelines of our developers and to remove all the friction from the processes. For instance, in the past, when a team at SAP wanted to open source a project, uh, there was a lengthy approval process, which sometimes took several months. And we have completely redesigned that process in 2019. We have removed the tool breaks in this process we have removed the sequential execution and parallelized it. And now it's completely based on GitHub. So if a team at SAP wants to open source a project, they can just file an issue in our OSPO repository in our enterprise GitHub system. And then normally it just takes one or two weeks to approve that. And the bottleneck now is not the process any longer, but the time normally that the development teams require to clean up their code to provide better documentation examples before they publish it on a GitHub. Um, and that way, I think it's now for SAP de uh, developers much more straightforward and much more easy to contribute to open source and to donate or to publish complete projects as open source at SAP. Yeah, and I know the, the help is massively appreciated. Uh, so we're getting a lot of kudos from the SAP internally developers. One additional thing like the SAP sample files on GitHub, this was also a big change. They're now fully open source Apache 2.0 license. So this also means you can use the sample code, put it into your into your products, and and be safe, like from a from a licensing perspective. So kudos, Peter and the team, for pushing this through. Um, one more question: So on on SAP and why we're engaging in open source and and all these projects. Can you maybe summarize that one a little bit for us? Yeah, there are a lot of reasons, of course. Um, the one and very important one is our customers and partners. They need an open platform with um, open APIs and with open standards. And that's what we are providing with the SAP Business Technology Platform. This is essential for them to understand our platform, to be able to integrate it with third party solutions and also to build extensions. The second reason is, of course, we want to attract developers. And with open source, it's much easier for the developers 
to get informed about what SAP is doing and um, uh, to inform themselves about the level of engineering that we have here at SAP. And um, yeah, the most important reason from my point, personal point of view is the co-innovation aspect. As an open source developer, you are kind of standing on the shoulders of giants. You can take what, what others did before, look at it, read, it, read the code, understand it, and then you build on top. And um, yeah, without this kind of co-innovation, I would say, for instance, in the field of machine learning, where we have seen tremendous progress in the last two to three years, um, that was only possible because of the fact that the papers were published uh, openly and that the source code was available. And yeah, the kind of innovation that you are seeing on fronts like cryptocurrencies, uh, machine learning, cloud native technology, this wouldn't be able without uh, open source. No single company can somehow outsmart uh, the community. Perfect. Yeah, outsmarting the community, it's almost like um, it's yeah, like you need to have all the publicity there and, and the understanding. And I think this really helps um, in various aspects from security, but also like getting the, the teams and, and the community behind it. And I think this is a nice lead also into the next topic with Martin. Um, Martin, I know, I think your, your bandwidth is a little bit lower. I think you're operating out of an RV. Um, so that's maybe folks why the picture is a little bit smaller, but we can hear you no problem at all. Um, but for the international audience, because uh, around the globe, maybe you can explain a little bit um, and describe the, the German Corona One app and um, what it is and what, what we have built there. Martin. Yeah, good morning and uh, greetings from the Black Forest. Um, I hope the connection is uh, well established. I think the Corona One app in Germany, uh, we started uh, to build end of uh, April after the first lockdown. We are currently in the second phase of the lockdown and it's a tool uh, to interrupt the, um, the virus change of uh, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 as a disease. And um, we have decided um, to make this as an open source tool. Uh, why was this the case? Um, right from the beginning, and if you switch back to uh, March when the COVID uh, started, so to say, it's true around the world. Um, it was clear that with this app, and if we build it for the um, German Health Ministry, we enter as well a political space. And uh, right from the beginning, there were a lot of discussions in Germany about transparency and uh, how, is, how we can uh, provide digitalization in a, in a pandemic and still have trust in democracy and in this kind of things. And the answer for sure from a technology perspective, from developers' perspective was right from the beginning, uh, let's do an open source project to be as transparent as possible, share with the community the concept, share with the community the architecture, share with the community code. And this is what we have done until the launch of, uh, of June. Peter and his team were very uh, deep involved in this kind of activities. I think it was uh, from the uh, media echo, the biggest project we have started at SAP, not uh, not due to our code, but due to the relevancy. And uh, we for sure follow this way until uh, the pandemic is over. Perfect. And so next thing was, um, so what did uh, let SAP in the German Telecom to run this project as a contractor um, for the German government and the Robert Koch Institute? Martin, can you summarize this a little bit for us? Yes, I think um, in March, there were the first starts of the hackathon uh, in Germany was called Wir uh, gegen Corona or Wir against Corona. And a lot of guys from development uh, were in these hackathons, have seen what is possible. And you know, with the infection change, the biggest issue is how can you interrupt them very quickly? How can you do this very effectively? And the idea was here to use a tool which everybody of us owns, or nearly everybody of us owns, uh, use a, a mobile device. And uh, we were following up on this during uh, March by the ask of Jürgen Müller. And we're looking uh, what can we do as SAP uh, with regards to this crisis. You know, in March, the, there was the idea to run a, a different project, uh, which would have uh, been a so-called a centralized approach. And uh, as I said, at SAP, we have had uh, two cornerstones from architectural perspective. We said, okay, if we do the implementation for German government, we do it in a decentralized approach. And the second thing is we do it with open source. And for sure, um, you know, Deutsche Telekom, uh, is a big partner of uh, of the German uh, federal 
um, state. And uh, together with uh, Deutsche Telekom, we were asked now to accelerate this and to be able to launch the project in 50 days. Perfect. So next thing, uh, what was the reason, uh, Martin, to really do this app as open source? Uh, I think you, you touched a little bit on it, but I think in the, in the beginning, a lot of people asked, like, why, why is SAP Deutsche Telekom doing this in open source? Yeah, it said, I think the best thing in software to provide transparency and to gain the feedback of the community is the open source, source approach. We have had, uh, as I said, directly started in the GitHub repositories with the concepts and we got a lot of feedback. We got a lot of feedback from the community concerning architectural concepts. We got a lot of feedback uh, concerning as well coding proposals in terms of security. I think the, we have today 23.8 uh, million downloads in Germany. This is approximately 28% uh, of the German population. That's a very high value for a consumer app in the, in the health segment, as you can imagine. And uh, from our point of view, the prerequisite to reach this is uh, this open source approach, because uh, by this you have the, the, you are pretty much sure that a lot of guys look in the code, that you can see what you are doing, that you do not have to explain, uh, that, that you do the utmost level for security. And I think that's as well the prerequisites that about this topic of security, there are not no discussions around the CWA. And by this, it was the second thing what we wanted to do is, uh, we were asked as well by our partners, Apple and Google, what can we do by the global pandemic? And uh, we said, okay, we give our code or we bring the code uh, in open source and it can be used by other countries as well. And today, for example, the Corona One app of Spain is a fork of our app and the Corona One app in Slovenia as well. And a lot of feedback comes as well from uh, other countries. Perfect. Um... But I also understand, and, and my team helped also out a little bit, like, but there were some challenges in the beginning on in the respect of transparency, and uh, especially since a lot of the, the information was made public, architecture, specification, etc. Can you outline this a little bit, like what were the challenges uh, to make this all public? No, I think it was. I think um, it was as well good that the uh, German Health Ministry and the Robert Koch Institute they were as well convinced that we drive this as an as an open source uh, project. For sure, this leads to a lot of feedback, a lot of uh, interest, but. For example, for us, it eases a lot of a lot the way how to work with, uh, for example, Chaos Computer Club, because that is the way they they would like to work. There were a lot of questions, for example, why Apple and Google do not uh, do their exposure notification framework as open source. I think even last week there has been launched from the Android organization an uh, open source approach for the exposure notification framework of Android, and. Um, for us, this helps. This has helped a lot. I, we haven't seen any compli any complications there. I think what was new is that you have to manage the community. What we are still doing, at, even at the or especially at the beginning of the project, there were a lot of run into it. You have to imagine we were launching the Corona One app at 17th of June, and after seven days, we have had eight million downloads. And I would say then the then the party started. There came a lot of feedback in. But uh, for us, it's, I would say it is com would be completely impossible to not manage uh, this kind uh, as an open source project. There were a lot of expectations in German society, which is good, shows that a lot of guys were looking into it, how to deal with it. And I would say the whole uh, process, how we have developed this is, uh, is good. It's not a normal open source project, as you know from other projects, as Peter mentioned, with the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, it's due to the fact that uh, the parts of the Corona One app is always in a political space um, if we bring in or if we bring in new feature proposals etc we for sure have uh, to discuss with the health ministry and so on even today afternoon there is a big round with all German prime ministers about what are the next uh, features of uh, the corona one app so in this way it differs but this is phase two um, i think for the German government has eased a lot of the discussions because as i said the most uh, important value and, and and money in political relationship is trust of the population into the security of the app perfect yeah so um definitely there was a lot of discussion i still remember the initial things of when we just before it launched and uh, as we opened it up and uh, the questions we got in via the issues on github so uh, kudos to the team and I know 
there were a lot of folks on the SAP side, Deutsche Telekom and uh, the government working behind the scenes to really work and <clears throat> also create the transparency. <clears throat> um, next question I have is a little bit the learnings around the Corona One app. Um, running it as an open source project um, with like all the publicity, like maybe Martin, Peter, you want to chime here in around the learnings and what we can take back. Yeah, for me, what was interesting is, um, of course, we had thought about uh, reacting to the issues and to the uh, pull requests that were given to us on, on the GitHub repositories. Um, but of course, the end user of the Corona was downloading it from the app stores, and um, we also had to react to the comments and to the feedback that we got on the app stores. And um, yeah, that was more um, effort than, than we thought about, but that was also very valuable to us. And uh, another amazing thing, I think, is um, we had this example that colleagues from GitHub have been scanning different open source projects, and they also scanned the German Corona One up and they found a potential vulnerability in the code. They informed us and then within four days, a new version uh, was published um, that uh, closed this potential um, security hole. And so this is only possible with, with open source and that's amazing to see um, the collaboration here. Yeah, for me, for me as well, that um, the point is I'm pretty much believe that an open source approach improves the quality of your coding and the quality of the work a lot because while you go out, you always have to share with the with the developer community. Means uh, uh, you know that you will get feedback. The whole development process is a little bit changing because you rely on the on the feedback. But which is uh, very wonderful. And as Peter said, uh, when you get the scans, the vulnerabilities, it helps a lot. Uh, uh, for yourself to to get the things in the right position. Perfect. But the next thing, the next thing, I think the next thing what we have learned is, I think that is well worthwhile to mention, uh, working open source in this context, as I said, has a lot of uh, advantages. But uh, on the other hand side, you have to invest as well to manage a community in the right manner. So we drive huge, uh, huge investments. And it took us as well a little bit uh, to convince uh, our partners in the Robert Koch Institution and the German government that it is uh, worthwhile invested uh, money. And it's not that uh, we want to uh, get feedback for the coding. It's uh, an integral part of this kind of uh, products or projects. Um, that that you have to manage in the community as well. That's the price you have to pay, and I think that's accepted. We we are doing this. Uh, we are doing this currently, and this kind of discussions are over. From this point of view, I would say it was as well a huge learning project for um, how to drive digitalization in the public sector. Mm. No, and I think it really helped a lot with the transparency. I saw this, um, like even there were some really, really tough issues and questions coming in and initially like, uh, why is it not distributed available across Europe and, and so on. But then you guys did an amazing job and, and everybody like uh, together to, to answer this and create this transparency. And I think this created also a lot of trust in the app itself um, and I think you probably have already feature plans for the next years on that app. Um, what can be enhanced in, in that as well and also coming in from the community. So this is great. So from our discussion here, there's a lot of like really, really good deep insights into open source, the Corona Wine app. I wanted to ask you a little bit about what should the audience take away uh, from our discussion around open source, the transparency around building such apps in the public? Um, maybe you can chime in on, on that thought a little bit for the audience. Yeah, from my point of view, please take away that SAP is fully committed to co-innovation as part of the open source community and follow us on at SAP open source on Twitter to stay tuned on everything open source that um, is done in our context. Yeah, from from pandemic or from Corona One App point of view, you for sure ask to promote uh, Corona One App in your personal uh, relationships in the families. And uh, you know, situation is currently tough in uh, Germany. Don't give up in uh, fight against the, the change. And uh, for uh, the most important thing from our point of view is. Uh, uh, share your keys. 
distribute the keys, it's really safe, has no impact on your personal life. It, you still stay a pseudonym. And for us personally, from the Corona Wanted team, I think the whole thing together with open source is a good approach to show that digitalization and democracy is uh, still working. Perfect. Now yeah, it's it's definitely interesting, and I have a, a good success story also personal from my side with the Corona One app. Yesterday morning, I got a little email from the school where my daughter is going to school, because they had multiple incidents. The teachers and the school where they showed up like uh, the Corona One app, and that's when they had to make the right step and said, okay. School is closed until now, until we have enough testings and have a safe environment to send the, the kids and the school kids back. So I think these are a lot of examples out there. And um, definitely, we also encourage everybody here in Germany to, to use the app and install it and, and get going. With that, um, there's a lot of learning here on open source. Um, Peter and Martin, thank you so much um, about your insights. Uh, as you heard it, um, check out the webpage around open source, check out the GitHub repository, uh, follow SAP Open Source on Twitter, follow the podcasts, um, plenty of things to do. So thank you very much, Peter, Martin, and for the, the insights on open source. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. So open source projects are everywhere. You just heard a good story about how SAP is using open source. What are the projects from Kima, from Cloud Foundry, um, but there's also a lot of open source projects out there in the community and uh, we should not forget about it. So first of all, Devtoberfest, everything what the teams created was created by the community and it is open source. So kudos to the teams and I think it's also a great signal to share this information, share the projects and we encourage everybody, even if you haven't really uh, worked in the same team so far, there's still a chance for you. Yeah. Like that, they are open. They, 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 if you want to contribute, you want to jump into this. Um, coming up in the holidays, you have some time. <laughs> That's what you can do. And there's more examples around open source from the external. You probably also know a few. Yeah. So I know, for example, SAP Machine. That was um, and just an interesting tidbit. It was actually um, my first project at SAP. So when I started three years ago, I started with the Java virtual machine, so not the open source one. And then they quickly created this open source version of the JDK. So that's amazing. We also have the .abup, right? No, .abup.org. Is exactly. So that's definitely a big, big repository. And again, something the, the open source community around SAP has started that one. Um, so .abup. .org, that's, that's the, the website to check out. Um, completely community open source driven, all the projects um, in the ABAP field, like so this is definitely also good. Um, and we encourage everybody also to share um, your source code in there if you can. Like definitely that's, that's something also to look back what Peter was, was talking about, OSPO. And if you work for a company, this is also a little bit of a reminder. I always tell it to developers, check it out first, like really what is your IP licensing things? What can you do on sharing? Not that you get in trouble because there's some companies have more restrict ones at SAP. For example, we can contribute as developers to different projects. But I also encourage you because if you do something at, for your company and you want to share it, you better have to check that one. So there's a lot of like still things from, from this site also to learn about it. Um, not a big project, ABAP Git. ABAP Git, there's See, a I session was on that. that one up sorry, for you sorry, you but there's forgot. a session on that and I forgot to mention it first. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Yeah, so ABAP Git, um, I know the, the teams, Lars and, and everybody around, um, amazing, amazing. and. I don't know how often um, we highlighted this one in keynotes before. Uh, I think a lot of things around steampunk um, is, is really embracing it as well. So thanks a lot for this contribution. And um, 
always looking forward and this, this, the, all these amazing things, like before we were talking about Visual Studio, uh, Studio Code, yeah, you have the ABAP editors mm -hmm. now in there. It's, it's amazing what the community is putting together and encourage you to, to do more. Yeah. One item also I touched on it before was samples. the samples. So um, SAP samples, that's also on GitHub. This is, I think, where we put all the sample codes to help you through tutorials, through the code jams, learnings, etc. but also the workshops on there. Um, and uh, what I mentioned before to Peter in, in the discussion with Peter is, the samples, um, uh, SAP samples, is also now under Apache 2.0 license. So we removed um, a proprietary, proprietary license. Oh, see, sometimes like <laughs> names and words come, don't come <laughs> easy in the morning. Um, so we removed this about a, a half a year ago, but uh, didn't make a big announcement, but just wanted to get also this news out. So if you embed, code from the, from the samples uh, in, into your project or you start out, and this is probably the bigger use case, mm -hmm. start out, uh, how do I get started, put some sample files in and then you forget about it and it goes in production, <laughs> you're now safe because like, that's exactly what we want to also encourage you that you can build out on these different projects around it. And I think we can tie together really nicely. So what Martin said about, you know, the way that that we can beat the pandemic, for example, is using the Corona Warn app. So he encourages everybody to use it, to download it, to be a community. And I think that ties back into open source, right? I mean, we all have to work together and we can improve the code. We can improve the technology that we're using based on the open source contributions from everybody out there in the community. So it's a nice relationship. Good. And next up is a community talk, of course, also on open source. <laughs> and I have uh, two experts in here to talk more about open source. So talk is about simplifying cloud integration in an IDE with Gradle plugin. And I welcome Daniel Gravinson, SAP integration expert, and Marina Pontiakova, uh, SAP Analytics Manager. So great to have you here, Marina. Great uh, to say hello to Daniel. Uh, community talk. So I basically throw it over to you, Marina. You prepped a lot of questions for Daniel and looking forward to a great discussion here. Hi, Thomas. Thank you very much. I see that atmosphere and energy in the studio <laughs> this morning is just great. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Marina. And I'm super excited because today I will be interviewing Daniel Graverson about the SCP Cloud Platform Integration topic simplification. So Daniel, hi. Uh, tell us more about yourself first. Hi, and and hi. Uh, thanks for, for having me here on on this uh, this show. What do you call? <laughs> Take it. Um, yeah. So my name is is Daniel Graverson. I've been working with SAP integration since it was XI three zero. And then just kept on going, and it seems like it has been evolving. And at least you also at this ticket, there has been quite a lot of news about integration, what's going on, and uh, it's really exciting to see what's what's happening in this uh, this space. Um, so one of the things that in this process that I've been working on when, when working with integration, I've always been curious about how I could actually improve the way people were doing is integration. What, what were the, the gaps that I could fill in with small tool processes in place to, to simplify the process, uh, to make it easier for, for people to deliver SAP integration. And that's the, one of the, the topics for today. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that 90% of the people who joined uh, this session already know what is SCP integration suit, but maybe for this 10% who's left <laughs> and just um, joined by curiosity, maybe you can just uh, tell a couple of the sentences about like overall SCP CPI and what it's all about. So SAP Cloud Integration Suite is SAP's um, iPaaS solution. It's a cloud-based solution to make it easier for customers to in, uh, integrate things. So we all know that the challenges about having multiple systems that need to connect to each other in a simple way. 
And this iPad solution, a cloud integration suite, is able to do that. And it contains a lot of uh, functionality, both for, for processor or integration, API explosions and stuff like that. So it's all in one package solution. I also heard that right now uh, it's quite fit to the ACP strategy, right? <laughs> Yes, and obviously they, they come with uh, SAP needs to do integration right, uh, and that's what we have been hearing the whole uh, call uh, show uh, session. And there is definitely a lot of things in this uh, product. There's a lot of pre-delivered integrations that come that make it easier for customers to integrate their products very uh, much faster. Okay, and you made a Gradle plugin, right? <laughs> so what this plugin is about and how we can use it? So, so the idea is that once you're developing SAP integration, uh, you have two ways of, of delivering it. So whenever you are developing an SAP integration, it contains of, of two ways or two workflows, if you call it like that. So one is that you define a process that in a PPM and model where you said, take the message, process it, send it over here, handle it in this way. And it is really yeah, simple. It, it, it has the functionality that you need uh, to do a lot of workflow or handling messages and stuff like that. And then the other thing is that for some, some processes and steps, you need to um, improve the, the functionality, uh, make custom code. And this is the place where you actually have to, to use and so the, the normal way would be to use XSLT or uh, a Groovy script, which is the, the, an enhancement of Java uh, framework or Java where you can actually script a lot of all these frameworks about how do we map things and stuff like that. And these two things is sometimes a little challenging because when you're developing the, the Gradle plugins, you need to the, the editor built in in CPI is, is not flexible enough, doesn't have the, the capabilities that you want as a developer. Um, and most people will then copy it. Either there's an open, well, a, a service that you can use to, to edit these query scripts in and try it out, or they will have it in a Git repository and then they will do some manual synchronization behind between these two things. And these were one of the, the, the challenges that we wanted to, to solve to make it easier for customers so they could seamlessly switch between the ID and, and the, the editor depending on what, what kind of uh, artifacts they wanted to change and what were the processes in place. That basically sounds extremely engaging, but uh, tell me more how I can get started with it. Because you know what, uh, I really want to try it myself. Thanks. Yeah. So, so I've posted a blog uh, on the topic, uh, or on on this topic. It's called uh, if you search for SAP uh, CM one hundred four, which is the same name of the session, you should be able to find it. And there, there's all the different resources about all the the the. the well, all the, the Git repositories that you need. What are, what are the configurations that you need to do uh, to do this? And obviously, so one of the things we, we do support both CPI, which is the cloud integration suite, and we support API management where you also have from time to time this saying that the, the built-in editor is not enough and you may want to make use of a better editor to handle some of these things and, and do custom edits uh, in it and there it also makes a lot of sense so if you go to the blog there is yeah the description on how you set it up um so one of the things that we have been doing for the last five years or so is to first we created a pi testing tool then we found out that customers are also going to use cpi we added the capability there uh, being able to test iflows uh, simpler and then from that, we actually also, um, we had to do versioning of these objects. So we found a way that we could synchronize the, the iFlow that would change. And then once we had that, we could actually push it into a Git repository. And that means it's, 
if you use our the pickup tool to to push data into this Git repository, it's really simple to set it. So I've created a video where it's like take like 20 minutes to try to install or to install it, synchronize it with your PI system, deliver it into a Git repository, and configure this Git repository with all the required artifacts. So there is like three different uh, artifacts that you need as a part of this, and it just builds it all, and then you can go around edit it. And obviously, most developers would be using some Git repository to do uh, development in because that's where things is going right now, that Git is the place to go. And that's why we thought it's the best approach to move the users into a Git repository, give them, all, all, give them access uh, without having to figure out too much stuff. So we, yeah. As a part of this, is about simplifying the process that developers need to go through uh, in order for, for you to set this up. So it's an open source, right? Yes. So when when we were doing this, obviously we have our product that's to 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 simplify most of the processes. But when we were dealing with these things, it was like, okay, it's really difficult to license these things, uh, and it was like, okay, so how would you actually monetize these things? And my idea was it was much better just to get people to use these plugins. And then hopefully once they started to use them, they could also see some of the benefits that our FIGAP tool could, could give to their processes. Um, and obviously we also get uh, 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 incident or what do you call tickets and uh, from, from time to time with people that say, hey, how about supporting these other things? So one of the things we we changed was also to support value mappings, which is a part of this. So uh, it we try to 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 follow the, the community and helping out in, in this way. That sounds very cool because I really want to try it myself. Maybe then, you know, the last question. Um, do you have any further steps, any further ideas, what you want to do next? So, so obviously there's uh, been a lot here at, at Ticket and we obviously need to figure out how, how all of these things work together with our plugin and our tool and how these, these things work uh, in, in a good way. Um, so one, yeah, I guess one of the other plugins we also have is, is a way that also from your IDE without leaving it, you can also do testing of the iFlow. So you can both develop, change the Groovy script, and then you can actually call testing script. So, so all of that would be kind of integrated into the same development process that, that developers are needing. Um, the other thing is that a couple of weeks ago, we, yeah, so whenever we're talking about uh, DevOps and um, what's going on in that space, a lot of customers always ask, so yeah, we have this HR DevOps and that's, I don't know if there's some kind of an KPI or something like that for all the customers, like we want to do this uh, also and figure out how do we, we deliver um, integration via Asia DevOps. And we did a proof of concept where we could actually use both the Git repository that we already created uh, with, with the tooling and also actually deploy these Gradle plugins in Asia DevOps or whatever in, in these uh, scripts that you, you create. And with that, it was actually possible to, to run these, uh, run all the, all the flows um, from it. So you could take a uh, commit and make a pull request of, of an iFlow. And then once you, you merge it, it was possible to create builds and then deploy it along the pipeline. Um, I, there's, there's, so some of the, the gaps in that process is that the, the way we are developing CPI and even with our plugins, it's not really where you would be if you're developing um, Fiora, UFI, Java application, because you don't really have a local place where you can deploy things in and you can try it out. And once you commit it, it can be built and processed along the way. You just have your three or four tiers uh, then landscape that you're, you're using. And that's one of the things we would like to figure out. How do we actually make this process 
a little bit at what's the what is it that we we can add a functionality to, to this to make it easier for for customers to 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 get started and try it out and and leverage uh, these functionalities I already checked your link, so I Google our session number in the, so type in this Google number. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw your, <laughs> I saw your blog. Uh, so guys, everyone who is watching us, check it as well. And thank you very much, Daniel. That was a very interesting topic. So then let's hand back to Thomas now. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. So thank you so much, Marina, Daniel. This was great. And I also have to check it out. I haven't had too much time lately, but I think there's a lot of things for us to do. So um, great. Uh, the blog everybody can find, hopefully. Just yeah, do the Google search. I think blog most post. people will be able to do that. Okay. It's blog post. I just got the yeah. reminder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. Now, thank you so much. Cool. You can also Google uh, it by Daniel Graver's name and just put ACP in the end, in, and then you will uh, find his um, account on the people.acp.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have cool. a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>So next up, we are into a little bit Devtoberfest talk and also going a little bit back into my magic <laughs> tablet. Trusty tablet to, there. <laughs> to do more exploring what is happening. So Devtoberfest, um, the windows are still up uh, later today. Uh, so that's queued up, but I also wanted to mention it once more because as we said before, it's all about open source. Mm -hmm. Um, the projects, um, also if you go um, to, the, to the GitHub repository, that's where you can find also the, all the repositories. That's one thing I forgot before to mention, like where to find the Devtoberfest repositories. And as I said, like it's, it's for developers, from developers, for developers, totally community driven. I remember when the advocates team who came up, Thomas Young, Rich, DJ, um, Marius, Max, um, Vitali, um, Kevin, uh, um, Josh. So I think I got everybody in there. <laughs> See, that's the thing. We start with four, one name, you need to throw them <laughs> all in all, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when they came up with the idea, I was like, okay, just do it. Just do it. Um, this sounds great. So thanks and um, thanks for putting this together. And, and I think what was also really, so the really good feedback that we got from the community was on the enablement content, right? Because it wasn't just a content contest. It wasn't just about putting stuff out there, but they also did, I think, like four weeks or even more of just enablement. And there were videos and information so that people could really get into the topic in the beginning. That was very awesome to see. Yeah. Good. Um, so let's go a little bit into what else. Like we talked about um, news guide mm -hmm. before, and um, also where are all the hidden secrets and where you find them. And it's not so hidden. So that's the thing is we want to show you a little bit how to explore all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, easiest thing is to always check it out. Also from directly from the homepage. Uh, that's where you have, for example, the news guide scrolling through and you can download it. Um, but also I want to go to the next one. Special thing <laughs> coming up today at 4 Central European, uh, not at 2, two. <laughs> Central European time. Um, that's where we do a special um, one hour. Uh, we have the Team Liquid uh, doing mm -hmm. the presentation once more. And then because there's so many questions like how have you guys done? Tech it, um, what was it all, how you had to prepare for virtual, how is this channel one working? So kudos to the team, rapid response. Uh, we put uh, making off together and that's like at two, uh, two Central European time this afternoon. Yeah. But let me jump into the news guide once more. And um, if you haven't checked it out and I think the showing is better than mm -hmm. just talking about it, mm -hmm. uh, 
So we talked about before also like all the stars, these were like highlighted news. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you see it also, it is interactive. And uh, so you can read the news. And I think what the team did very nicely, you can jump from the news directly into the different areas yeah. where to find more. Mm -hmm. So here, for example, I picked the enterprise messaging. Um, definitely a big, big highlight we talked about, I think yesterday or the day before. But now if I want to see what's going on, um, the ECC event enabling add-on, mm -hmm. I can click on it and get directly into the um, appropriate thing. And I think that one is, is really nicely composed. So I have no problem like finding from the news and how to apply it. Um, also very interesting here, if I go to the SAP Business Hub, I get to the, to the services over here and I right back into like the Esfahana business or events. events. Um, and so this is, this is great. Um, really appreciated how the team put this together. And I think like, everybody out there, please use this opportunity and pick the news guide up, um, have a deeper look into it and follow what you can do. And what was really nice also on this section is like, yes, there's the links to the different SAP pages, but down here you see it. There's even like blogs from um, SAP folks and, and blog. others include blog, blog posts. Post. Sorry, DJ. <laughs> I know, blog posts. I hope I said it now like five times. I will remember it's blog posts, but see. Yeah, we, it's a typo. I, I got, it's a, it's a, a typo. Typo, <laughs> typo news guide team, we need to update this one. <laughs> But so, for example, there, if you go into it, then um, you also find the blog post from Martin Bachmann mm -hmm. and the event driven architecture. So this goes even um, a few levels deeper to explore on how to apply um, what you have seen from the from the demo, guide. yeah. And also, this was part of the, the demo. Uh, so the, the executive at Chemo, uh, we did a small demo there. And I think, you know, we also got feedback on, on Twitter, like, why are we talking about SAP ECC and not SAP s hana And I think it's very important to point out that we still have a lot of customers on SAP ECC, and we want to enable them to build cloud extensions because we think that's the way to go. I mean, we that's our recommendation from SAP. And this add-on will let you not only have the event triggers in your SAP ECC system, but they're also going to be compatible with SAP s hana which means when you eventually move to SAP s hana you can just take your extension with you. You don't have to rebuild it, recode it, you know, redo anything with it. So that's really the value behind this, this release for SAP ECC, I think, just being able to fully embrace the cloud-first approach and then move everything, move everything with you. Right? Yeah. And with that, I think <sighs> we exhausted our yeah. time here today so it's great it was a great show yeah. um and i i'm i'm still blown away here so thank you everybody also big big kudos out to the team who was cheering us up <laughs> outside and yeah. keeping us awake you know getting us everything we needed it's it's been a heck of a ride i would say it's been amazing but there's still six hours of tech to go right yeah, Thomas? we're not done we're yeah. not done six hours to go um Let's we'll be back, actually. And we will be back a little bit. <laughs> we'll be back a little bit. Um, but yeah, just a huge thank you to everybody that was involved um, in TechEd from our side as well. And I also want to extend that thank you to all the session speakers, the session owners, the track leads, everybody that worked on creating this great event and the great content that we had on there. And a special thank to my co-host, Thomas. It's been really fun being with you on stage. So and the same to you. Hope we do it again. Yeah, really we soon. have to do this again. Or <laughs> Yeah. Tweet. Yeah, exactly. We should do this Tweet again. being grassle if you want us to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>Hi, I'm Mike. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello, all, and happy time zone. You will actually see that the service has been called and the entity has been ATC ticks. Support for CDS as we use liquid base for our 100% ABAP shop. ATF, strings, quick fixes, benefit from contributions. Find all of these amazing projects.